All right, let's go ahead and get started with Chemical Reactions 1 podcast. This is an introduction to chemical reactions. At the heart of chemistry, we have so many different and exciting chemical reactions. This one you see here is the combustion of cyclohexane. I'll get to do this one for you in class. Other explosions of the ignition of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas combined in the perfect ratios creates a, releases a tremendous amount of energy. So we're going to get to have a lot of fun in this unit as we uh, begin to explore chemical reactions. You should have three different handouts that were given to you. If not, again, these are available on petersonscience.com. I'm not going to explicitly refer to them in this podcast, but it's nice to have them out because we're going to start really um, using them throughout this unit. All right, the first thing that I want to talk to you about would be diatomic elements. These are elements that are found in a diatomic state in nature. Di meaning the prefix to. Um, this is the most stable configuration for these seven elements. So they are not found in nature. You are not going to find just a hydrogen. It will always be a diatomic form hydrogen gas. So anytime we're writing and balancing chemical reactions and you come across these seven elements, remember the acronym Brinkelhoff. Brinkelhoff will help you to remember that bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine all exist in a diatomic state. It may also help you if you look here, you see we have like a number seven here, and then we always have our oddball over here, hydrogen. So they are diatomic. So remember Brinkelhoff. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and look at our first example. Here we have ethanol, and you're given the formula for ethanol. You're not expected to know the nomenclature for this. However, you're going to pick up on a lot of the organic nomenclature throughout the course. It's burned in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So let's look at what that would look like as a formula. We have... Um, our ethanol here. Notice oxygen is placed in a diatomic state. Yields. So this arrow here means yields, produces, forms. Carbon dioxide, remember we're to the right of the stairs here, so we use our Greek prefixes, and water. You're going to need to uh, jot this down in your comp book as well. We need to add what are called states of matter to all chemical reactions. They are indicated in parentheses as a subscript, as you see here. Um, we have solids, liquids, gases, and aqueous. Aqueous is any substance dissolved in water. Um, this would be most ionic compounds. So if you take uh, table salt, sodium chloride, and dissolve it into water, it is aqueous. Um, so let me see here. If we look at the states of matter here, in this case, a lot of students say, well, how do I know water is a gas and not a liquid? How do I distinguish between those two? You will either be told that it's occurring at um, standard temperature and pressure or at room temperature or at, which is 25 Celsius or 298 Kelvin. In this case here, this is a combustion reaction. You'll learn more about that in upcoming podcasts. It's, um, it's an explosion that releases a tremendous amount of energy, like you saw in those videos in the opening. So that's going to occur at a very high temperature, so we can put the water as water vapor or in a gaseous state. So balancing chemical reactions is where we're heading with all this. And that can be a little tricky at first, but like anything, you'll get the hang of it. The goal essentially is to have the same number of atoms or polyatomic ions on both 
the reactants and products side. Here you can see we have the um, synthesis of water through the combination of hydrogen gas, notice the Brinkelhoff, and oxygen gas, again Brinkelhoff, yields water. So it's important to define two more terms, uh, subscripts you're familiar with, um, coefficients maybe not so much, but th those are these numbers here in front of the molecules, okay? Now notice there's not a number here. That means it's implied there's a one. We typically do not write the one. If it helps you to get the hang of balancing reactions in upcoming podcasts and lessons, by all means, feel free to write the one. All right, at this time, I'm going to go and do a PHET simulation to, to give you a visual representation of balancing chemical reactions. You can find this uh, simulation easily online. You can go to Google and type in PHET simulation, balancing chemical reactions, and it'll take you to the simulation I am going to show you now. All right, so if we take a look at the simulation here, uh, we have nitrogen gas combining with hydrogen gas. Note they are both diatomic. Yields ammonia. Okay, and at the top we have a balance uh, seesaw. And you can see we have zero all the way across because we haven't started yet. So let me go ahead and click one ammonia formed. Okay, so you can see both have tipped to the right side we're showing that there is one nitrogen and there are three hydrogen. The goal is, again, to balance. So we're going to need to come over to the reactant side and try to get these to um, be the same atoms on the products and the reactant side. So I'm going to click one. So notice when I put a coefficient of one in front of the nitrogen, it ended up being two nitrogen. That's because this is a diatomic, um, and so this coefficient of 1 here applies to like 1 times 2, maybe you can think of it. So we're adding 2 nitrogen, and the same would be true for hydrogen. So let's go ahead and add a hydrogen. We're still not balanced. So now we have, uh, let's see, we need uh, more nitrogens, okay? Um, we have two here, we have one here, so let me try adding one more nitrogen here. Whoa. All right. So we're good on nitrogens, but we are way off on hydrogens. You can tell on this side we have six, and right here we only have two. So how do I make this number six? Well, I add a coefficient of three in front, and there we go we are all balanced. Okay, so hopefully that simulation helped uh, you to sort of understand a little bit about what's going on. Um, again, feel free to hop on that website and play around. There's several reactions that you can um, work with there. So back to the combustion of ethanol. There are, um, if we place coefficients of a one, a three, a two, and a three, we have a balanced chemical reaction. So I would pause the podcast and really take a look at that for a moment, make sure it makes sense to you. Um, you'll see here the coefficient applies to the entire compound. For example, a coefficient of three in front of this water means that there are three times two or six hydrogen and three times, there's a one there, but it's never showing right there, three oxygen. So we have six hydrogen, we have three oxygen, we have in the carbon dioxide in the two molecules, this coefficient of two means there are two carbon and there are four oxygen. So our Georgia standards of excellence today are dealing with the, the use of mathematics and computational thinking to balance chemical reactions. Um, also, we have a problem set that you will start working on here. You can find that on petersonscience.com or it was given out in class. Thank you.